Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's call. We're going to kick right off with news you can use. Today, we're going to talk about quantitative easing. Say that one 16 times in a row. Quantitative easing. Okay, what does that mean? How does that, how, how does that affect you? You guys have probably heard that. And for those of you who watch the news, see the business news, uh, you've probably seen that uh, come up. Uh, this is what the Federal Reserve is doing right now. So let's back up a step and I'll tell you about what's happened uh, with the housing market and how we got such cheap interest rates over the last couple of years. The Fed, the bottom line is the Fed or Federal Reserve, which is our quasi government agency that, you know, is in charge of all the money, all the US dollar, um, they printed money ad nauseum. They just kept printing and printing and printing. On top of that, they bought, you know, Bank of America, all these lenders wrote mortgages. And as soon as the money they gave Bank of America to write mortgages was used, they bought those mortgages back. And so they increased their balance sheet. They traded dollars for mortgages. So they gave free dollars. They don't just give B of A money, but they bought all the mortgages from B of A. Imagine, imagine this. What if somebody came to you and said, uh, look, I'm going to use Joe Doyle as an example. Joe, listen, whenever you're making widgets, I will let you make a trillion dollars worth of sales of widgets over the next five years, and I will cash you out 16 times a day. You will never, you'll have a trillion dollars in your bank account by the end of this thing, all you got to do is give me a trillion dollars of widgets. And by the way, you get to make profit on every one of those. That's really what they did. Um, they actually, it wasn't just a trillion, it was $2.7 trillion. So the, the Fed took their balance sheet and gave away cash and got mortgages. And so now they've decided to, they're not going to give away money anymore, not going to buy mortgages anymore. They actually have this huge balance sheet weighted down with all these mortgages. Now they need to turn those back into cash to put into the cash pile, okay? So here's what they did. They said, we're going to stop printing. We're going to sell these mortgages to the Chinese, the Russians. Oops, sorry, we're in a war with Russia. We can't do that. Um, you know, they can't sell them now. And so we start the printing press back up again. But now we have to use more expensive dollars because there's not everybody buying this stuff out there anymore. Um, and at the end of the day, they've got, they're overloaded on their balance sheet by probably one and a half to two trillion dollars of mortgages. And the only way they can get out of that is by printing more expensive dollars. That's why mortgages are going up at a faster rate than credit cards or personal loans, or even the amount of money that Bank of America will pay you for putting $10,000 into a CD. The most expensive money, I think, over the next six to 12 months is going to be mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are going to go up faster than the Fed funds rate. Um, and that is going to, and they've, they finally admitted yesterday, and we'll talk about it probably not till Tuesday now, but they admitted that, yes, we're going to have stagflation. We're going to have this situation where the economy is in the doldrums, it's in the shits, but uh, this inflation thing's out of control too. So, and it's going to manifest itself in this business. So what's going to happen? How's that going to affect us in the business? Um, you're seeing this market throttle really quickly. We're seeing in Los Angeles, we just saw last couple of days where we had $50,000 price drops on a million dollar project. Um, you know, a house that literally sold in a March, 1st of April for a million one is now down to a million. So it's boom, boom, it's come down 50,000 twice. It's gonna come down again next week. Why? Well, people can't afford those expensive mortgages anymore. They just can't do it. So we're gonna have a decrease in price, especially on the higher level uh, homes, higher level starter homes. Now, you know, most people can't afford a million dollar starter home, but a lot of people can afford $300,000 starter home. And what happens is, you know, yes, the on the $300,000, the mortgage payment goes from 600 to 800 big whoop they can people can handle that but on the more expensive one it went you know a lot more because you have more money involved you have a higher interest rate and it's not just proportional like that so um you're going to have prices in some markets crash quicker than others other markets it's going to actually stabilize a slide so low priced first-time home buyer markets i think are going to stabilize and maybe even continue to go up 
high priced first time home buyer markets by high priced, I mean, anything 500,000 and up, I think is going to uh, start dropping or continue dropping if they've already dropped. So how do you play that? Well, you're going to have a lot of motivated sellers out there, right? So somebody's got a house that they owe 400,000 on that was worth a million one. They can't sell it for a million. It's dropping. Is there a play? Yeah. If you can get it a lot cheaper, you could turn right around and you've still got a comp that's going to be good for six months of a million one. So you could turn right around and get that property either on contract vis-a-vis -a, -vis a subject two plus seller carryback, or you could get, um, you know, a, a cheap cash deal. So there was two houses that, for example, <clears throat> looked at yesterday, one in uh, North Hollywood and one in Woodland Hills, both in Southern California. And uh, I just told the, the wholesaler, I said, these aren't even close, these prices anymore, um, because I'm projecting two things. One, it's going to take six months to rehab and then resell, and the market's not going to be worth what it says it's worth today, six months from now. And then number two, um, you know, the, the inflation has caused the cost of rehabbing to skyrocket dramatically. Cost of materials, cost of labor, everybody's using the inflation thing uh, to raise prices. And so, you know, you've got a, a combination where prices are going down, costs are going up. And so I'm like, I would be, you know, this is on a million dollar product and I, I'm going to be $200,000 less than that at a minimum. And they, today they came back and said, okay, seller says, just give me a price. We want to get out of this thing. So, you know, realistically, I've swerved into what I'm predicting. And I think you guys can all do the same thing. I would price my purchases very aggressively. And I would include as much seller financing as possible because uh, like all rats leaving the sinking ship, they will climb over each other to get out first, literally. <clears throat> and I think you're seeing that in some sellers. They're going to be pan. And I've seen this happen before, uh, at least twice in my real estate investment career. I have seen sellers run over each other to be the quickest to cheaply drop their price and to get something um, sold before the next door neighbor has to sell his. Um, and that will cause a mass exodus, a, what used to be called in the 1930s, a bank run um, on the housing market. So I would definitely uh, be really sharp penciling your prices and getting the best deal you can find out there. All right, that is our news you can use for today, the 19th of February, 2022.